John Ward recently featured a street lighting cutout on his channel, so I thought it would be quite interesting to take a look at a different type from the one he took apart. And I'll provide a link down in the description below to John's video as well, so you can compare the two of them. And the purpose of these devices is that where you've got something like a street light or a piece of street furniture, bollard, sign, whatever, and you need a cable coming into it from the street uh, for power, then it provides a mean of connect means of connecting that cable and it also, more importantly, provides a means of isolation. And the isolation uh, doubles up as the fuse protection. So if I pull this out, and it is quite stiff, uh, you'll see that it doesn't just completely isolate the live side here, which is underneath underneath this red cover, but it also has an HRC fuse, high rupture capacity. And this one uh, is a Lawson LST 16 amp. And this fuse isn't just like a standard fuse like you'd find in, well, the standard, well, the horrible wee glass fuses that don't really break a lot of current at all. These are actually designed to break really high fault current. In this case, this type of fuse will break up to two, uh, no, I was going to say 2,000 amps, it's much better than that, 20,000 amps. They really are rated for breaking industrial supplies. The observant of you may notice there's a crack in this cover, and that's why it's not going into service, that's why I've got it here. And the reason for being able to break such a high current, I mean, 20,000 amps sounds huge, but in reality, under fault conditions uh, with industrial cable coming straight in, that's not unreasonable, and you need to be able to break it safely. But the reason for that is that uh, sometimes the street lighting is fed from a central pillar with cables going out to the rows of street lights that loop in and out. That's why this one's got a, a two cable ports that's for looping in and looping back out again. But other times you might have a situation where you've got an underground cable feeding the neighbourhood, the actual DNO cable, the distribution network operator, and they make a, a splice into that cable and they bring a cable into the lamppost and that is basically fed directly from the same power source that's uh, powering all the houses in the neighbourhood. This is where it gets a bit tricky if you have an accident with it. If you blow out the power, it takes out all those houses as well and gets very, very political indeed. But that's probably the least of your worries if you've managed that. And it's really ultra important. I can't put enough emphasis in this that you must put in the correct fuse and not wrap a bit of wire around these terminals or wrap it in tin foil or put in an inappropriate fuse because... If you do that, even though it's shielded from your fingers as you put it in, if you initiate an arc in there and it flashes over onto the neutral and earth connections in here, then it will make an almighty electrical explosion. It will cause third degree burns. It will knock out power. It will be so loud that it will literally reverberate around the whole neighborhood. It's a proper electrical explosion, so don't do that. The HRC fuses are the only type to use because they've got a filling of very fine silica dust. And the silica dust, when the fuse wire blows in the middle, it causes the silica dust to uh, melt and it forms basically a glass tube that encapsulates the metal. And that's why these can break such a high current. I'd also recommend only getting them for proper electrical distributors. They're not that expensive. They're just one, between one pound, two pounds each, you know, which makes it odd that, you know, you get your fancy meter and it's got an HRC fuse in it. And the meter fuse costs a lot more than one or two quid. Wonder why the, I wonder why the meter manufacturers don't just stick these fuses in, given they are rated for the very example of, you know, the worst case scenario of you sticking your meter across an industrial supply, because these are about as industrial as you'd get, despite their small size. Now, one of the things I like most about these is the way they terminate. If you've ever terminated steel wire armor cable in a sort of factory environment, you'll have used a gland. These... Uh, are in a way that's not as neat as a gland but it's much smarter for doing it in a confined area because these things are almost always in a fairly confined area sometimes too confined sometimes they just leave no room at all which is annoying particularly the designer architectural furniture so if I take these long screws out and lift this off here is the wiring area so we've got the uh, brass connection plate here that if I lift this up it just slides out as John Ward's did as well and he had the same connection system now if I doodle let's uh, take a look at what uh, a wire armor looks like in the first place uh, these are designed to accommodate what's called a steel wire armor cable and a steel wire armor cable basically has an outer sheath usually black plastic and then in the next layer in is steel strands that are sort of in a, a spiral around that but just a very slight twist then in the middle of that is another core of black plastic 
then the inner cores that you want with the uh, insulation themselves, and then a sort of putty just to pack it all out, a sort of either a soft plastic or a sort of putty or some some of the older ones just had sort of cord, shaped cord in there just to pack out the shape of the cable. And when you terminate these, quite often they'll have two cores, live and neutral, plus they'll have uh, the armour here, which is used as the earth. In some instances, this will also be the neutral as well as the earth uh, in where it's coming straight off a cable, depending on the type of system they're using. But um, when you terminate this, you strip this uh, back so you've got a short section of the armour sticking out like that, and normally you'd terminate it, it into a gland. And a typical cable, cable gland looks like it's got a hexagonal body with a threaded section at this side, threaded section at this side, and then a sort of cone coming up to where the cable goes in. And then that's a sort of core right through for threading the cable through. And that cone is usually knurled. And when you terminate the cable, you'd normally slide a nut over the cable with a slight sort of thread at the side and then a sort of taper at the back. And you'd splay the wire armour strands over this knurled brass point here and as you tighten the gland up it clamps them tightly onto that and it provides mechanical anchorage to the cable and a really good electrical connection. It's debatable, I've got a niggle about this, you know, one of the biggest uh, electrical incidents, one of the most dangerous that happens in electrical distribution is losing the neutral, uh, combined neutral and earth which is this cable here and that often happens because uh, when they make a cable joint quite often you clamp onto that with an electrical, electrical connection on the other side that bridges across and then the ca original cables inside you uh, sort of splice onto them, you use clamps to grip onto them and then pot the whole lot in resin. And at the point you've broken the outer armour to get access to those inner cores and used that clamp, those clamps are a weak point and if they break connection, if it burns up, uh, then there's no clue it's happening underground until you start losing the neutrals and earths at houses and the whole, basically all the metal work around the house suddenly becomes alive between buildings. It's not a great scenario. So this uh, system here, normally after you've made the gland off, you'd put this into a panel and uh, you'd also use what's called a frying pan washer, which is called a frying pan washer because it looks a bit like a frying pan. And it's made of brass and it slips over there and uh, then you put that into this into the panel and then you use the most horrible nut in the world to actually anchor it in. And by most horrible nut in the world, I'm talking a, a punched steel nut, which has got rounded edges and it's very flat. It really is wafer thin, making it very hard to grip. And then you're supposed to, there's nothing, there's no spring load or anything like that. You're supposed to tighten that down, clamping the brass frying pan wash on the outside of the metal panel and then this clamps the whole thing in place. But it's just one of the biggest weaknesses of these things. I, I don't like these steel nuts at all because they don't properly really grip down. It'd be nice if they used a serrated washer in here to actually provide uh, tension to hold that in place and lock it more. But they don't. And when you've got a, a control panel with a lip and then you've got the gland coming in and you might have a lot of glands, then that can be very close to that lip and it just makes it very hard to get anything onto that to tighten up, particularly when there's a cable coming out in the middle of it. It's a pet hate. Um, but the idea of the brass washer is that you uh, can then put a nut and bolt through and that provides a pretty good earth. I have to say, whenever possible, if I'm running wire armour to an application that does require a good sound earth and you're not going to get one easily, as long as I can bond it, uh, ground it at one end, I'll often use the three core and just use them as live, neutral and earth. And I'll probably use the uh, outer armour as the earth as well, but use the inner core as a proper guaranteed earth. It's just what I do, my preference, because I don't have much faith in armour glands uh, having terminated lots of them. But in a compact space like this, it's quite hard to terminate these glands. And because a lamp post is effectively an electrical enclosure, and therefore you can have um, the exposed single insulated cores inside, it's not that issue, or, or you can, you, you don't have to make it look as pretty, you don't have to, um, well, I'll, I'll show you another device afterwards that uh, is an example of that, where because it's an enclosure, you can have the single cores inside. That's about the best way to describe it at the moment. But this is clever. You strip the armour, it's so easy. And you can lift this right out the lamppost to actually terminate it. 
and you slip this over the armour uh, and then when the armour uh, cores are put over the outside of this you put this jubilee clip or hose clamp as some people might call it over them and you tighten it up and it makes an outstandingly good electrical connection. You also get knurled versions of this that's even better that just bites into the metal that little bit and that provides a, a really easy solid connection. Once you've got the one or two cables into that you can then basically swing it back into the lamppost you can sit it back into this and then swing it into position find out where it's going to be comfortably sitting uh, with the on the end of the armors and then you can screw it into place and the connections here this pushes back this uh, cover it swings back so you get the live in live out loop you've got the neutral uh, loop here which has two terminals one the top and one the bottom with the back screw here doing the bottom terminal and you've got the earth which is the same it's got the one terminal on the top and one on the bottom which is the back screw here and the cables in the lamp post you generally bring them down and uh, you leave plenty of slack it's always good to leave slack in cables you bring them down you form a drip loop with them and then take them back up and then they go in there and these things are not waterproof as such they're designed to shed water uh, but they're not completely waterproof which uh, is why you have to kind of add that drip loop and also why it's got this shape it's designed to try and avoid diverting water down the inside because you don't really want this to fill up with water um, it's a very good system it's very simple now there is street furniture that if you've got a remote pillar with one of these in it and you're then you're feeding out to other street furniture some of the uh, architectural furniture is just terrible for uh, space for terminating stuff and that's where you get things like this which are just very ingenious and functional uh, this is one that screws onto a wooden panel at the back and you either get it with the narrowed brass insert pointing up the way or down the way is that going to be steel these ones they, I'm not sure. These might actually be plated steel. I'm not sure. I've never really thought, never held a magnet to one. But anyway, in the case of it pointing up, you bring the cable up through it, and I'll bring that pever back in again, and you feed the cable up through it, and then you bend the wire armour down over the top of it so it uh, fans out round that, and that provides extra pulling out power. Uh, protection and then you put the jubilee clip around that and it clamps it on the other option for thicker cables is to have that pointing down and just do it as here where it just sits over that brass uh, spout if you will uh, and then you clamp it on with the jubilee clip and for even smaller areas where there's just absolutely no room you have this one which literally if the armor came in that's a uh, clamped around that metal piece which the cable is then threaded through and it's got the earth terminal on it and then you put the clip round and you clamp it onto the knurled metal and it just provides simply a really good solid electrical connection onto the side of the armour it's a, it's a neat system so as you can see if you're used to uh, working in factories uh, with standard armour glands and I used to just make off hundreds of those like you'd have a refrigeration control panel and it would just be like rows staggered zigzagging you actually had to place all the sort of uh, frying pan washers in the pattern and then draw around them just to fit in as many as possible into the space very very irksome to terminate very time consuming uh, if you had a lot uh, but uh, if you've worked in a factory environment with those then you'll suddenly realise that uh, these would be so much nicer wouldn't they? they they're not as pretty as the proper armour gland with the rubber boot that goes over it but uh, they're very very functional and in the case of a uh, lamp post it just makes it so easy to terminate so yes they're neat I like them they're very smart they're really sensibly designed if you have more than one circuit required say for instance uh, well John Ward's had two fuses and that might be street lighting, it might be signage, it might be Christmas lighting outlet, it could be CCTV cameras, anything that has multiple power requirements. But you could just have one fuse protecting them all if the cables were rated high enough. Or you could have another small box above with circuit breakers or fuses in it. Circuit breakers are generally not the best idea in lampposts because... Uh, Although they're supposed to be dry inside lampposts, moisture does get in, you know. It's not unusual to open a lamppost and find everything just dripping with water inside. And that can, even with fully covered uh, units like this, you can still get tingles just through general electrical leakage through residual water uh, forming 
particularly if it's dirty and it forms a sort of moist, sort of conductive layer. Um, getting tingles in street lighting isn't that rare. It's just part and parcel of the job. So, um, yeah, I like these. They're really functional. They're neat. And uh, once again, I'll say, uh, always replace this with the correct fuse. They're not that hard to get. If you're working in the industry, just make sure you get tons spare as a precaution because uh, it's not so great when you run out of the exact fuse you need uh, and, you know, the power is off and, you know, you've got no choice but to try and find someone who's got one of those fuses. It's always worth getting a good selection spare just uh, for your protection so there's no temptation to try and bypass things or do silly stuff like shorting out fuses or bridge in inappropriate ones. But yeah, very neat. I do like these.